Let's talk about a couple of things. I'm going to do a video analysis very quickly for you. So here's the thing. I, 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 I've mentioned this before. I've explained it a little bit before, but um, apparently I need to keep explaining this until it takes hold in the ballet world. So look, teachers are the mothers of, of ballet. Teachers are the mothers of everything, by the way. Any professional doing anything at a high level anywhere in the world on any subject, it all began with the teaching of that subject and mentoring and support, etc. So teachers are the mothers of ballet. So I guess I'm a mom in some ways. Okay. So let me, um, I'm going to go through a video and I'm going to preface this by saying yet again that when I point these things out, this is me teaching the subject of the video for free, right? It's also teaching all of you the most valuable skill that you will have to possess in ballet, whether you're a teacher, a coach, a director, a dancer, a student, a parent, wherever you are in the ballet world, the most valuable skill that has to be acquired, and it's also the toughest one to acquire, is the ability to see. To see. It's the art of seeing. It's the art of seeing. Now by seeing I mean also, it's not just looking at it, obviously, it's, it's, it's the way you perceive what you're looking at. Then, armed with a bunch of information, right, Under organized and understood, so it would be a curriculum or a method, right? Then you can react efficiently and quickly and effectively to what you see. Now here's what it looks like from my side. Okay, so here's Skylar Brandt doing Foyte. And she has made some improvements, um, no doubt, because of some of the corrections I've given her through this podcast. And, you know, she was around when I was working with Missy, so there's that. She made some improvements, but not ones that are going to be permanent and not ones that are going to protect her health physically, right? So go ahead and take a look at her foyte. And to the eye other than mine, this looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. So take a look at that for a second, okay? Now notice she starts traveling. She starts traveling. So that's the first sign that something is off. She's traveling and then also moving a little bit, right? Now you can't just say to her, stop traveling. It doesn't work that way. So now, the thing about tutus is this. They are essentially corsets, right? Right through here. They're corsets. You know, they don't have the wire. Well, some of them do, but they're corsets. So they to some extent hold things together a little bit, but it's not nearly enough, you know, it, it can't replace training, obviously. And then the tutu, the, the skirt piece of it covers what's really going on, but of course I can see exactly what's going on. And so I'm going to use this as an, as an example, a teaching example of how I see things, right? And then I'm going to use some of her other videos or still images from her, whatever, uh, on Instagram to show you clearly what's going on. Okay, so you've just seen her. Now, look at this still image of her in mid pirouette. This is her from the back. She's in the middle of a turn. Do you see that from her, let's say, right shoulder, there's an S. Right shoulder, left hip, and then leg, right? It's kind of an S. Now, so her right, so let me explain what's going on here, okay? So she's turning on her left leg, this leg, right? So she's sitting in her left hip. So to compensate for that, her ribs have to, have to go the opposite direction. This is the position she's in, right? Now why is that? Why does this happen to every single dancer I look at? Every single one, male, female, makes no difference. Every single dancer of, the, of, you know, let's say the last 20 years, 30 years maybe even, have this effect, trained in America especially, but, you know, it's, it's everywhere in the world now. 
Why is that? Whatever their standing side is, in this case her left, they're sitting in the hip and the, the corresponding rib is twisted over like this. Now, and this just causes havoc in the shoulders, right? Here's why. You have an axis, right? Which is something we practice, let's say, in Ronda Cham, or just Tondu, Tondu, whatever. Everything you do on one leg and on two legs is about your axis. Your axis, okay, this is a pedagogical thing. This is one of the pillars of pedagogy, actually. There's three of them, right? There's plie, releve, plie. There's your axis, and then there's your back and your port de bras and all that. This is the second one, your axis. Your axis runs straight down the middle of you on two legs. On one leg, straight down the middle of you. What that means is the objective of the training, the fundamentals, is such that you don't adjust to move. You don't adjust. There is no adjustment. There's no leaning. There's no tilting. There's nothing. There's placement. There's strength and coordination to where you can move this leg wherever you want and your axis remains consistent. Whether you're on two legs, one leg, up here, front, arabesque, makes no difference. Your axis remains constant. That's what she can't do. And not only her, any of them, same boat. Because, obviously I could just say they don't understand placement, they're not strong and coordinated. This is true. But more specifically, she doesn't have a demi-plie. None of them have a demi-plie. And that's where the solution begins. So the reason she's on her left leg, so the hip goes here, right? So the ribs have to shift so that if you drew a line from your head all the way down, it would be a straight line. But instead of being lined up and placed and strong and consistent and turning everything straight and lined up, they end up making all of these, these ridiculous compromises. And I don't mean they're ridiculous for doing it. I mean their body just does it because it has no other option. It's not strong or coordinated. So the hip sits, the ribs have to go over to create some kind of equilibrium or she would just fall over. If she didn't make that adjustment when her ribs or her body didn't do it, it, it's kind of an equilibrium thing, it's a balanced thing, it's an automatic. She would just fall over immediately and roll her ankle and break her foot, her ankle, right? So that has to happen. So in, in the place of actual training, fundamental training, you get compromises everywhere in the body. And it compromise, the compromise is this, she will be injured again. She's already been injured, they've all been injured. Students are injured. They don't even make it to the profession and many of them are injured and out. She will be injured again continuing to move like this. It's, it's a guarantee. And it's because she doesn't have a demi-plie and her teachers didn't understand demi-plie and her coaches don't understand demi-plie. And it's not her fault and it's really not their fault either. It's not about fault or blaming or criticizing. We have all inherited a great deal of ignorance from the past. There's some great ideas, a few. There's some decent ideas, some. But there's a whole lot of bad ideas, and bad ideas don't respond well to pressure. And, and somehow, for whatever reason, it has fallen on me to create that pressure so that you see what the truth is, and then you can, once we all see things the way I see it, pedagogically, then we can react to it appropriately and we can solve it. So I could solve this in an hour. If I was in the studio with Skylar Brandt, in an hour I could get her squared away. And then of course she would need repetition to make it permanent. But that's another story and it's not something I'm, I'm likely to do. But that's how relatively simple this is for me to solve. And it's, it's uh, Curious to me that even a global pandemic which has shut down ballet is not enough or thus far has not been enough for not only the institutions but the individual coaches and dancers to wise up and seek new information and they know exactly where to get it. Okay, the dancers and coaches and everyone at ABT knows precisely where this information is. It's right here and they know it and they've seen the benefit of it through MISTI. So, it's astonishing to me that they, they, they have this religious commitment to not learning new things. Okay? Now when we're talking about the fundamentals, 
There are a million ways to get it wrong and one way to get it right. And they seem utterly committed to f trying all million ways. And of course, this is supported by dance media, right? They're not journalists, I, I, I couldn't use that word, but you know, the New York Times and Dance Magazine, Point Magazine, just can't wait to sell you the next terrible idea that's gonna get you injured, but somebody will make money on the bad idea and the resulting injury, right? That's the business they're in. So really, if you look at it, the New York Times, nor Dance Magazine, nor any of the dance media really has any credibility at all with regards to ballet specifically. Now, other forms of dance, I, I'm not gonna comment on that, but with, with regard to ballet, no credibility whatsoever. To the extent that you, if you did the opposite of what the advice that is given, you'll be, you'll be fine, okay? And if I'm being honest, I, I'm losing patience with this because what I want for Skylar Brandt and for everyone else in dance is for her to achieve her full potential free of injury. Now, that's a little bit redundant because you can't get to your potential if you're injured. Okay, I need to work on that definition a little bit, but that's why I'm doing this. And I keep getting um, these rather idiotic comments about how I'm criticizing. Well, no, this is what coaching is. And for those people who are accusing me of this, if you understood what ballet was, which you don't, you would understand this is what coaching looks like. This is what coaching sounds like. This is what it is to be taught ballet. Okay. Back to the children's table for those people. For the rest of you who actually want to learn, let's analyze a little bit. So what she's doing that you can't see easily because of the, um, the speed of the, the movement and the costume is she's doing this, okay? So I already told you, Every time she comes down, right, for each turn, her hip goes this way, her ribs go this way, and the hips also go back. That's the really bad part. So every time she, so her, she doesn't have a demi-plie, she has a crash. She crashes down, her hip goes to the side and back, her ribs go over. So her body just automatically, in order to get back up on point, she has to jam forward like this and that's why she's traveling forward. That's why she's traveling forward, right? And she can't help it. She cannot help it. She needs a demi-plie. And that may seem insulting to say, well, she doesn't have a demi-plie, the coaches don't understand demi-plie. Demi-plie is not a simple coordination, not at all. Demi-plie is your turnout. That's where it begins, that's where it ends. That's what this is all built on. I'll explain, okay? There's a, there's a reciprocal relationship between demi-plie and straightening the legs, okay? So when you begin studying the fundamentals, and we, I actually just recorded this class with Misha, okay? You set your placement up and you demi-plie to the, and, and the purpose of that is to set your placement up, to maintain the position of your hips and your core. The stronger, the more consistent you're able to do that, the more you can tighten your legs. The tighter your legs are when you begin demi-plie, the better quality the demi-plie is. So the demi-plie, the down bit, provides the, 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 gen is the genesis for the straightening of the legs. So, and the tighter the legs, the better quality the demi-plie is. You're building a platform here for turning and for jumping, right? And I know this is, this, this is gonna be difficult for some folks to wrap their minds around, but all of ballet works this way, right? This reciprocal relationship between a movement. So your demi-plie ultimately gets you your releve. And the demi-plie to releve, the releve, the strength of your releve, gives you the ability to come down from releve, which is the next movement. You understand? These are all transition steps. Plie gives you releve. Releve gives you plie, which gives you the next, in her case, releve. Right? So if you have a wobbly plie, you have no releve. If you have no releve, you get a more wobbly plie, and it starts to disintegrate from there, and that's why she's moving forward, and that's why she fell out of it. That's why dancers can't finish anything. Right? Because it gets increasingly worse. On the other hand, 
If you have a tight demi plie, you have a tighter releve. You have a tight releve, you get a, even a tighter demi plie, which gives you a tighter, stronger releve. And then you finish stronger than you began. That's what ballet is. That's what ballet is, techni technique wise, right? And from that, you can build everything else. She doesn't have demi plie. Her coaches don't understand how to teach demi plie because their coaches maybe didn't understand and on and on and back. So, but we can solve this right now and I'm happy to do it. But from what I can see, even a global pandemic isn't enough to dislodge these bad ideas. And, you know, I wouldn't spend my time doing this with her or anybody else if I didn't actually care about what happens to them. I actually do care. And I think one of, the, one of the things that's going on here is that they're so used to bad intention people in ballet that they just can't accept that there is a good intention person here trying to do something good for them. But ultimately, I don't have to live personally with the consequences of their decisions and so you know at a certain point I just have to go okay well they're gonna do what they're gonna do and good luck you know but I'm gonna keep doing these videos for your benefit and for everyone's benefit who wants to actually learn what ballet is and how to do it okay <laughs>